Let's now look at a few more complex examples of using the arithmetic sequence. Here we have a question. First they give us, they call it AS, and AS, that's just short for arithmetic sequence, is given by, and then you have K, 2K divided by 3, 1K divided by 3, 0, etc, etc. Now we need to spot a pattern, and in order to do so, we need to recognize exactly what is happening there. So first we have k, then we have 2k over 3, then we have k over 3, and then we have 0. Now what I notice here is that this is actually 3k divided by 3, and 0 is actually 0k divided by 3. Pause the video if you're not exactly sure where I got it until you are 100% confident you know what I'm doing. Now we can recognize, okay, what's going to happen if I take turn 2, this turn, and I subtract that turn. 2k's divided by 3 minus 3k's divided by 3 gives me negative k, negative 1k divided by 3. Same is going to happen here. So I can subtract them because they have the same denominators. k minus 2k give me negative k divided by 3. And this will once again give me the same thing. So I do see it is an arithmetic sequence with a constant difference. That is going to be d. Okay, so to find the next term in the sequence, I'm going to subtract another k over 3. So they ask, find the sixth term. Now, I'm already at 4, so I might as well just go on. So now I have none. 0k is left minus k would give me minus k over 3. If I do that again, I'll get minus 2k over 3, and this will be my sixth term. And I'll just number it. This will be term 6, and the answer for my first question. Term 6 is equal to negative 2k over 3. Okay, question 2, determine the nth term. That's just another way of asking to determine the general term. So we want tn. We know already the basic format of that is a plus n minus 1 times d. The first term is a is 3 over 3k or just k. We want to keep the nth term, so n is still general, but d is negative k over 3. Now this should be sufficient to leave it just like that, but I'm not going to. I'm going to simplify, so I get k plus, or actually k minus, because that negative k gets multiplied, negative k times n over 3, and then negative and negative is plus k over 3. So that I have 4k minus kn over 3. Well, you can choose how you want to simplify it, or you didn't have to. But again, pause the video if you're not exactly sure what I did. Well, let's look at the final question. If the 20th term is equal to 15, find k. So they tell me the 20th term is equal to 15. So I know t20 is equal to 15. And we must find k. Now t20, if I were to use my formula, I would get 4 times k, I don't know what k is, minus k times 20 divided by 3, that's what I'll get if I use my formula. Now that answer must equal to 15, because when I substitute in 20, the 20th term, my answer should be 15, and I must find k. Now this is a normal equation. I just need to solve that equation. I do so by multiplying both sides with a 3 to get rid of the denominator. So I get 4k minus 20k is equal to 15 times 3 is 45. 
And then finally I get 4 minus 20 gives me negative 16 k is equal to 45 and therefore k is equal to 45 divided by 16 negative 45 divided by 16 because I divided both sides with a 16 and there we go let's look at the next question calculate how many of the first 300 natural numbers are multiples of 11 Okay, so they're talking about multiples of 11, so let's just start. What are the multiples of 11? Well, we first have 11 itself, then we have 22, then we have 33, and that goes on and on and on. Obviously, the constant difference is 11. 22 minus 11 is 11, 33 minus uh, 22 is 11. A constant difference is 11. And therefore, if I look at this piece too, my first term is 11 and my constant difference is 11. So my general term, it wasn't necessary to, to go this technical route, but uh, you'll see just now it makes all a lot of sense. When you solve this one, you get 11n, which makes sense. Okay. The first term is 1 11. The second term is 2 11. The third term is 3 11. 11 times 3 and so forth. Now from there we want to know how many terms will there be that are less than 300. Okay. So there are three terms that are less than 40. We can see that because up to 33 we're less than 40. We want to go all the way up to 300. So actually what we're asking is what is the highest term that is less than or equal to 300. And the n will tell us how many terms there then therefore is. So we have 11n must be less than or equal to 300. Now when we solve for n on both sides, divide with, in, uh, sorry, divide with 11, divide with 11, let's just see what calculator tells us 300 divided by 11 gives me 27,27. So n is less than or equal to 27,27. Now we know n cannot be a decimal answer. This is repeated. n cannot be a decimal answer, which means I must round it. In other words, how many terms are there? I must round it. Not up or down. I must consider what n can be. n can only be less than 27. It doesn't matter what the comma afterwards say only less or equal to 27 comma something in other words it can't be 28 that's too big in other words 27 that means there are 27 terms that will be less than 300 one more example determine the arithmetic sequence in which the 21st term is 170 and the fifth term is 122. So we have that the T21 is equal to 170 and T5 is 122. Now what this simply means is that to determine the arithmetic sequence either we need to get the general term to find the arithmetic sequence or just the first three terms would be sufficient as well. But either way, we only have the 21st and the 5th term. So let's just at least put in what we do know. We do know that the general term is the arithmetic sequence. So we do know this already. And we do know then that 21st would then just be all that 
but instead of an n, there'd be a 21. So we would have a plus 20b. And the same goes for t5. Sorry, scratch that one. t5 would be a plus 4d. Sorry. a plus 4d. Now we know already that when we do substitute the correct a and d for 21, we'll get 170 as an answer, and for uh, uh, 5, we'll get 122. And now we notice something very crucial, that we have two unknowns to solve. We want to solve both a and d, but in order to do so, we need to equations and there we go we have two equations and we can simply say well let's take the first equation minus the second equation let's subtract the two when I do so I see I eliminate one of them so when subtracting this all these signs change so a minus a will give me zero 20 minus 4 gives me 16 b is equal to 170 minus 122 gives me 48. So I see solving for D, I get D is equal to 3. And therefore now to find the value of A, we simply need to substitute back into one of the equations that we have. So for example, we have that T5 is equal to A, which we don't have, plus 4 times D, which we now do have. So one thing you can remember is when I have two variables to solve, if I have already solved the one, to find the other one, all I need to do is substitute back. Okay? It's always the case. If I know the value of the one, I just substitute it to find the value of the other. Okay, now, I know that 4 times 3 is 12. A plus 12 is equal to 122. Let's leave that equation. Sign. And therefore, A must surely be 110. Because 110 plus 12 gives me 122. And therefore, I have it. My first term is 110. My second term I get by adding my constant difference. 3, 113. My next term would be 116 by adding another 3. And that is my arithmetic sequence. Well, these are some of the most difficult questions I could find on the topic. If you do struggle still, go over the video once again and see whether you can't find your issues. And I am sure you will quickly find where it is that you are going wrong. Good luck and try some on your own now.